It is a Wednesday, my dudes, and welcome back once again to Velocity Lake, the theme park I'm building in the video game Planet Coaster and subsequently recording the footage of the construction of and then uploading a video of it to YouTube. Hello. <laughs> great intro, great intro. Granted, it is becoming increasingly more difficult for me to come up with a creative way of doing these commentaries because this is the third back-to-back -back commentary I've done today. I literally just sat down with a cool, refreshing glass of Pepsi Max. I'm going to have a little sip just there. I've just been sitting here recording all of the commentaries for this coaster back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back just because I think because it's basically... Although we're doing lots of different individual things each episode, the overall thing that it's in service to the roller coaster is the same. So I kind of wanted to just do all the commentaries together so that I would keep things relevant. And if I addressed something like, oh, next week we'll be doing this, so I'll talk about that when we do it, I'll remember that. And so we'll actually remember to talk about it. And, you know, just to keep my, my mind my mind focused on one thing, as in constructing this roller coaster. Come to think of it, it's actually quite difficult for me to justify why I'm doing this. I guess because I very I procrastinate a lot, so I'll end up just doing. I, what I do is I do a load of Planet Coaster videos, and then I have to worry about the series for like six weeks, and then the, the fifth week comes around, and I'm like, oh god, I've got no Planet Coaster videos. So I'll quickly like just spend two solid weekends of doing nothing but Planet Coaster, getting all the videos done, and then just. Having a nice relax again for another couple of weeks. Another six weeks or... I don't know. I, I, I tend to just do Planet Coaster videos in bulk. It's not like Kerbal Space Program where it's done week on week. Planet Coaster is a very much factory produced thing. Because I only do this for the money, guys. Nah, JK. I've said this before as well. That if I really cared about the money, I wouldn't be bothering with this series. Because uh, they don't get many views. But I actually like the fact they don't get many views because, I don't know, I, I have a lot more positive comment interactions with people on these videos. And, like, I get... Because there's less comments, because there's less views, I get to read... I basically read every single comment on these videos. So if you comment on my Planet Coast video, even if I don't necessarily respond or like or heart it or whatever, there's a pretty much 99% chance I'll ever seen it, provided you post it within, like, the first few days. If you post to one, if you post on, like, a Mirror Lake episode, for example, I ain't gonna see that, so don't bother, mate. Uh, but yeah, I kind of I kind of get that more wholesome community interaction. Obviously, the best way, I guess, is on Discord. Uh, if you want to chat with me, not DM, please just tag me in the server and I will see it. <laughs> I don't like when people DM me with just things like hi, because then I'm having to dedicate lots of individual conversations to people and just neglect the server itself. That's something I've pledged to do, because one of the big criticisms of me in Discord is that I'm very rarely active in the server. And that's because I'm responding to all the DMs I get. So I'm trying to sort of take ignore DMs now and just focus more on the server. And I think that's been a good thing overall. Uh, not only because it uh, increases the community interaction with everyone, not just individuals, but also it kind of helps out my staff because I can take a more active moderator role on my server. So now I don't, if you just message me just, just like hi or just trying to start a conversation with me on Discord, I'll probably just ignore it because I'm trying to keep things in the ser main servers so that everyone can get involved with conversation. So uh, that's why I should probably just disable DMs, but I have I've been contacted by like game developers and squad staff through DM before, so I kind of want to leave it open. And it's also if people don't feel comfortable about raising an issue with the server in public, and they don't want to message any of the other staff members, they want to message me. That's kind of another reason why I leave it open. Anyway, yes, welcome to my Planet Coaster videos where I talk about Discord and just to completely ignore what's on screen. You may have gathered this by now, but in case you hadn't, this is the transfer track. So it's the system where we can get trains on and off the main loop of the roller coaster. So if the train develops a fault, or we only want to run if we only want to run one train rather than two trains, we can transfer them into the maintenance shed on this track here. Now this coaster actually only runs with one train anyway, but if we wanted to upgrade it to two trains later on, and then it was a quiet day in April and we don't need both running, we can then just transfer one back into the maintenance shed. Or you know, we could do maintenance on the ride in the maintenance shed. Another thing we can do. I always say this when I do them, but again, you may not have seen my other Planet Coaster videos, so I'll briefly mention it. Transfer tracks in Planet Coaster are not functional, at least, you know, not yet. Hopefully, I, I, I'm not anticipating them to do anything substantial now, now, that, now that Planet Zoo is out. But uh, uh, transfer tracks are not functional at all. They're only there for the aesthetics. 
the way I build them is, well, the way anyone builds them is just to build another roller coaster track, but to just leave it incomplete and have it sort of look like the same sort of style as the other track, to, as the other coaster, to make it look like it's still part of the other coaster and it's just the transfer track. That's what it is, and that's all it does. It doesn't actually function in any way, it's just a static thing. It's just like Animal Crossing furniture. You know that game? I love Animal Crossing. And I always hated when I got my first... Now we're just going off on some other random tangent, aren't we? <laughs> when I got my first Animal Crossing game, which was the one on the DS, the Animal Crossing Wild World, you could buy things like bikes. And I got really excited because I thought it was going to be like in Pokemon where you buy a bike and you can just cycle around really fast. Or any other video game ever, really. Uh, or, you know, you buy a pool table and you can play pool on it. But no, they're just ornaments. Like Even stuff like the bike, you can't do anything with it. Uh, or, like, a computer, you can't play, like, a mini-game. Like, it would be cool if you, like, you buy a computer on Animal Crossing and you'd fire it up and it's got, like, Space Invaders. Or, you know, being Nintendo, probably some Mario Brothers thing. Uh, you know, it's a shame, and I'm really I'm really excited for the uh, new one because... <laughs> what I, was about, I was about to call it Breaking Ground. <laughs> Animal Crossing New Leaf uh, really, really broke ground in terms of innovating uh, Animal Crossing. Like... You know, Wild World was an improvement over the GameCube version, in my opinion, although that is, uh, some people disagree uh, for reasons that I uh, understand. Like, for example, having the Acre system. While I didn't like the Acre system of the GameCube version, I understand how some people find it to be objectively better for them. So I guess subjectively better for them, uh, for things like, you know, working out if you've got a perfect town or not. Uh, but I just prefer the kind of smoothness of the Animal Crossing Wild World. I really like Animal Crossing on portable systems. I think it suits it very well. And, you know, just just general quality of life improvements I liked in Wild World. And then I think the Wii version improved on it again. But it was all still very minor upgrades, like quality of life. But New Leaf felt like a real evolution of the game. And it wasn't that different to the other Animal Crossings, really. But it was it was the most different, I think. And it's by far and away, like, the best one. Like, before New Leaf came out, everyone was kind of on the fence about which was their favourite, either GameCube, Wii, or DS. But I think now New Leaf is considered the definitive one. But now New Horizons looks like they're going to really switch switch things up because it's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it, it looks like it's really going to change things up. Now, I don't actually own a Nintendo Switch because... I guess I've just been jaded by modern console manufacturers and that they always release a console that's underpowered and rubbish, like the current Switch. And then, like, a year or two later, they release a pro version that's still not very good, but it is a lot more powerful. And so I've been kind of holding off on buying a Switch because I'm anticipating Nintendo to make a Switch Pro. They have just released the Switch Lite. So they're probably not going to make a Switch Pro if they haven't announced that already. But it's for that reason I haven't bought a Switch already. Like, I would have bought a Switch, but it's just so underpowered. And console manufacturers have now set a precedent where the the uh, launch day console is never the definitive version of that console. It's never as good, so I just don't buy it. And I don't know, I just hate exclusive. I understand why exclusives exist and why Nintendo doesn't want to make games for the other consoles. Uh, because it's in their interest to sell Nintendo Switches, but I wish it was just on PC. I just, I hate the fact that I've got this amazing PC with a 2080 Ti and all that, but then if I want to play Bloodborne, I'm stuck at 20 FPS on a piece of plastic because Sony won't want, doesn't want to release it. Like, that's one of the reasons I just can't get through Bloodborne is because I just got so sick of the frame rate drops and because I was like, it's probably going to come out on PC eventually. Oh, what a fool I was. But now I just haven't played it for so long, I don't even remember what I'm doing. So that's... It's like, I didn't even finish Bloodborne, which is an amazing game because of the fact that it just... I hate console exclusive. It's like, I understand locking it from other consoles. Because if you're going to buy a console, you've got to choose between Xbox and PS PS4. You don't tend to choose between whether or not you get a PS4, Xbox, or PC. You know, because the PC is not really comparable to a console because it's just so much more powerful than a console. But also... You know, it is, It. I don't mean, people are trying to argue that it isn't, but it is. It is a bit more of a hassle than a video game console, and it's not quite as convenient. Like, it's not really the sort of thing you have in a living room. They don't, it's hard to get PCs that have a nice form factor that sits under the TV. And you do get things like driver issues and troubleshooting. I mean, look at the Red Dead launch that just happened. That was a disaster. PC is not running it. Hopefully, this is an outdated thing for me to say. Hopefully, they fixed it. This is the reason I haven't bought Red Dead. The average Joe that doesn't know anything about technology doesn't want to do with that. So I understand why they would want to choose a console. But if you're willing 
to do that for a PC, then it, there isn't really an option of whether or not you get a console or a PC. Your mind would have already been made up on PC. So I don't know if they're really gaining that much by not releasing the game on PC or if, you know, I know a lot of people that own PCs and they just won't buy a PS4 because they have the same attitude as me. It's like, why would I spend money on a piece of plastic that runs at one-tenth the PC's ability just to play a couple of games? I, I mean, granted, I did do that because I, I wanted to play Spider-Man. And I wanted a console for, like, my living room for when friends came around and we could just play FIFA or something. I know FIFA is not the most ethical of games, whatever, but it's a good two-player game just to mess around with. Like, you can have little tournaments and stuff, a bit like Smash Brothers, I suppose, but... Uh, not like that at all. You know, just games where you can have, like, you can have some drinks, have a tour, and just watch other people play. It's just a fun game to kind of have in the party atmosphere. I just bought, like, a re an old version of FIFA. I say really old version of FIFA. I got FIFA 17 from a charity shop for £1.50. So I'd say, you know, I got my money's worth there. Uh, that's one good thing about FIFA coming out every year and effectively never changing is that it ages like milk, the old ones, and they just drop in value as soon as the new one comes out. So you can get, like, last year's FIFA super cheap. And it's the same game. You know, it's literally the same game. So I, I was happy to do that. And I, I only need the one FIFA. It replaced my version of my copy of like FIFA 11, I think, which I had on PS3 for the same purpose of just having it for when friends come around and just wanted something to do as like a tournament or something. Granted, I never really play FIFA because I, I suck at it. Re I, I'm very bad at FIFA. But the other games that I like are things like I've got Smash Brothers Melee plugged into the TV as well on the GameCube. I'm much better than everyone else at that. Uh, because most people haven't played uh, Smash Brothers in my friendship circle because everyone grew up with like the PS2 and the Xbox whilst I had the GameCube. So I was the only one that really ever played it. So obviously, you know, if, you've, if you're the only one that's played the game, you're probably going to beat everyone at it. So it's not the most fun for me and it's probably not the most fun for everyone else either. So, you know, stuff like that. That's why, that's one of the reasons, again, like why I'm surprised that PC took over because that was always the domain of consoles, wasn't it? You know, couch co-op, party atmosphere, all the good stuff. And you could argue that Nintendo still does that, but not quite so much with the Switch, I suppose, now. Uh, but PC has the best, you know, couch co-op ones now. Like, you got Mount Your Friends, Pummel Party, Move or Die. So my Steam Link gets the most use uh, in the lounge where I've got friends around than any of my other, like, any of the consoles, which is any... I've only got three consoles. I've got the PS4, PS3, and a GameCube. But yeah, the GameCube and the Steam Link get the most use, ironically. Uh, so I was just, it's just a shame that consoles don't really have that focus anymore. Maybe there's just not much of a market for it anymore, but I thought it was a shame when console game developers moved away from that. You know, I've just like, what have I been talking about? This Have I even talked about anything going on on screen? Here we are, choosing the carriages. This we are now, we're now addressing some of the actual footage that you guys have been watching. I mean... Uh, I don't know. Like I said, this is like, you know, how many commentaries have I even done now? Was it the third commentary or the fourth? I think it was the third commentary back to back to back. And I've still got a couple more to do of this roller coaster. So I guess I kind of just got bored about talking about it. And really, it's fairly repetitive stuff. And you guys are pretty smart, right? You subscribe to this channel. If you're not, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, smash that like button, check out Patreon. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, we all need to just chill out. You guys are pretty smart, right? You're watching this channel and possibly subscribe to it, but no sweat if you're not. Do not feel obligated to subscribe. Uh, but obviously I'd appreciate it. Uh, you guys are watching this channel, so you must be fairly smart. Or dumb. Probably dumb. But either way, you can probably tell what's going on uh, on screen without me needing to walk you through it. We're just uh, constructing a staging platform here. The station's in Planet Coaster. Uh, something I'd really like to be fixed in a possible sequel. Just because the station grid itself is so big and blocky and those disgusting black railings can't be removed. It would be nice if those, for example, those black railings could be toggleable. Because I think they can be toggled on and off using with the junior coaster. Not like through a deliberate act, but they can often just glitch and disappear. And it always makes the ride look so much better when they do disappear. And just, but the station block itself is so big. You've got this massive rectangle. So you're really limited in what you can really do when constructing a station building, which, by the way, is what I'm doing here. You're always really limited in what you can do with a station building. It's just going to be a big square. In real life, most roller coaster stations are not this big. Or, you know, you can certainly get ones that are much smaller than the stock one in Planet Coaster. Because uh, I think they mentioned this on Bro Coaster, actually. Uh, great series, by the way. Check it out. Much better than my series. Uh, I think they mentioned this on Bro Coaster that when Planet Coaster first came out, it was a much more restrictive game. And then gradually, as time went on, and a lot of the 
uh normie players <laughs> uh moved on to other things and it was basically just the hardcore freaks like me that's <laughs> left playing it the devs kind of unlocked a lot of it and started taking some of the restrictions off so you could potentially build super unrealistic things but also by that same coin gave you a bit more freedom to uh have things like uh track collisions so you can have custom scenery a bit more easily and make custom roller coaster tracks by like overlaying different kinds of roller coaster track to get a more kind of a uh, thicker feel to it. For example, the Pioneer Swinging Duck roller coaster, you like build that track underneath the track of the water coaster and you can get a really nice looking roller coaster track that looks a bit like Flying Dutchman at Efteling. I think it's Efteling that ride. The excellent Planet Coaster YouTube channel uh, operator um, did a, has is still doing an amazing, like mind-blowing recreation of that ride and it's been going on for so long and that's something he did he built two roller coaster tracks identical one the water coaster one the pioneer coaster to kind of get that nice track aesthetic highly recommend that series i'll stick a link in the description if i remember <laughs> and uh other rides like um the joker rmc coaster at six flags uh god what's it called discovery kingdom six flags discovery kingdom uh the little one in california that isn't magic mountain i think it's in california anyway uh there's an rmc coaster there called the joker and it's fairly standard easy to recreate ride in planet coaster but to get the color scheme right it's very difficult because the joker coaster has obviously look at if you can see the track on this right here right it's just two rails the joker coaster the left rail is purple and the right rail is green you can't do that in planet coaster but what again the excellent uh youtuber variable gaming who sadly has retired from planet coaster but still his back catalog of planet coaster videos are top notch he did a joker recreation what he did was he took the he just built it with a green track and then basically built a, another rmc with a purple track just following the layout of his one with the green track and just banking it and clipping it in such a way that uh, the purple clipped through the green rail on the left hand side to give the impression that it was just one roller coaster with two different colored rails that guy has the patience of a saint by the way <laughs> like but that was a really good again i'll try and link that in the description if i remember it if i forget just check the description please and write a comment and i'll quickly change it but i am gonna i'm writing this down on my piece of paper on my notepad i have on my desk so hopefully i won't forget to do check those things out. Maybe I'll stick a card on screen, but that's asking a lot of me now, isn't it? I mean, to be fair, I do check these videos once I've uploaded them to YouTube to make sure that the video, you know, didn't have any compression errors or anything. So it should, um, forget it. There will definitely, there will definitely be a link in the description. But here we are approaching the end of the, uh, look at this, we're talking about the video once more. Uh, we're approaching the end of this station building construction. While it's a fairly generic building, I'd say it's one of the most detailed stations I've built in terms of kind of a realism factor. We've got all the structural pieces there. We have some lockers. I say lockers very loosely. They're just shelves to stick backpacks and other loose items that might fall out on the ride. Um, Steel Vengeance has a little, I think it's Steel Vengeance, has a, a glass sarcophagus as you go in with loads of broken phones that fell out of people's pockets on the ride that were then collected by staff members. Kind of a fun little feature of that ride. Uh, but we don't really want that to happen to our poor guests. So we've added some space there just for them to stick their loose items that don't fall off on the ride. And then just generally, you know, having those hazard strips and having custom fencing around the, the station. I'd say it's a pretty nice looking building. The actual stairway up to it is still a bit incomplete. So we'll have to, uh, you know, add some more detailing there. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. We're going to just cut down. This is a POV of us entering the station. I guess you couldn't really see much from that because it was over so fast. But that was uh, the ride entering the station there. Uh, worry not, there will be a full POV at the end of this video, just like last time. So you can see kind of how things are evolving from the perspective of the ride itself. But now we must move away from the station and start working on other things on this ride as I pan the camera around very nauseatingly. I touched upon this earlier, uh, possibly in last week's episode. You know... I just, you know, I said I was doing these commentaries back to back so I could remember what I'd already talked about, but now I can't remember what I just said. If I said the thing I said for me, it was like a few minutes ago, but it might have been in a different video for you guys. It would have been a week apart. But at some point for me today, so either this episode or last episode, I mentioned we're going to be building some tunnels for this ride, just to help not only kind of for because it's a pretty cool thing to ride through in real life. Whenever I've been on roller coasters with tunnels, um, but it also increases the in-game excitement rating, which I know doesn't actually matter, but it's just nice to have that. So because I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that sort of thing, it's nice to know that the game approves of my roller coaster design as well so we're going to build a tunnel because having scenery close to the ride uh, bumps up the excitement rating 
So obviously one challenge of building this tunnel here is that, well, Planet Coaster scenery pieces don't do curves particularly well. And obviously this is at the bottom of a dip, which is a curved thing. So it's quite hard to get this thing to follow the curve smoothly. However, we've got the custom catwalk on this coaster. And the custom catwalk for this type of roller coaster, and all the others actually as well, the railing has uh, vertical supports. So I basically just followed the path of those vertical supports and just followed the uh, custom catwalk and we ended up getting a fairly smooth look to this thing. The BNM Giga, which is the next coast we build, I think, uh, we do another tunnel as well and we do a similar technique using the BNM catwalk as well. So there's, I'm basically just constructing a skeleton for the tunnel at first and then we'll just fill in the gaps later on. So just adding a little bit of structural reinforcement by duplicating what we just built across a few different layers and then we can go ahead and place the roof pieces and then we can just duplicate those down and they can be the floor pieces as well. So I'm using these uh, square wooden pieces. They, they work quite well as well. I think they're balcony pieces in the actual game game in game description. Unfortunately, we can't use these for the walls just because of the fact that the walls change height, whereas the actual roof pieces are flat squares. They just they, they incrementally tilt upwards in segments. The walls are a gradual tilt. So we'll have to use separate planks to do the walls. However, it won't be a two long-winded process especially um, there i was actually just trying to see if i could use the balcony pieces for the walls but i quickly realized it weren't gonna happen so did i get the message just yet oh i think i'm still working on the uh foundations there we go so we're going to use these planks here and yeah the planks i think it looks nice because they have a slightly different look to the ceiling and floor so it i think it enhances the overall aesthetic to be honest of the tunnel having a separate kind of look to the walls themselves now they are kind of glitching into each other at the moment so there might be some zero framing in that you get that kind of glitchy spazzy look to the graphics when they're next to each other we can go and fix that by just offsetting every other wooden plank uh, once it's all done just so there's no clipping and so therefore there's no graphical glitching if that doesn't make sense then don't worry too much about it but that's what i do in kerbal space program as well when i'm building space plane wings you only build space plane wings if you play kerbal space program you might not you might just be subscribed to this channel for planet coaster but if you play kerbal space program and you build lots of wings together you you know they kind of like flash and glitch together uh, the way you can just get rid of that is by offsetting one of them by like a pixel or two and that gets rid of that same thing with planet coaster and any other game that has this problem so that's why I just offset every other plank. And now we've built one wall. We could, it's just a simple, uh, it's just a simple operation of copying it all over. And there's the tunnel there. And I believe we do another tunnel. Oh, we already. Oh, yeah, we did another tunnel, didn't we? On that break run that I don't think I actually addressed when we did it. Here we are. I'm just testing that tunnel, and it, I think that was a pretty smooth tunnel there. Uh, we could just cut ahead and just do a few tweaks though, because the rails were still clipping a little bit unrealistic. I wanted at least the. Uh, the sleepers of the track to be visible. So let's we'll go ahead and do some modifications. But for the most part, the tunnel is done. I believe we'll be doing the. Uh, there's another. There'll be another tunnel, the third and final tunnel on this ride. Will be done next episode, I believe, because we're about to. I'm just zooming out on the timeline. And I can see the POV is about to start. So it will be next week, the next tunnel. So you know, there we are doing the final bit of offsetting here to sort out the floor. Oh, we gotta do that beam as well. Gotta do the beam. Gotta do the beam. There we are. Beautiful. So um, it's about we're about to crossfade into the POV, so I'll do a quick wrap-up here. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I will be back at the end of the POV, but... Uh, yeah, I'll be back at the end of the POV. So I'll just do the wrapping up then. Please enjoy. I will see you in just a second.
And here we are approaching the final break run now. The final break run will be something that we do need to do a little bit of improvement on. That will be done next week as well as kind of a few more kind of dotted T's and crossed I's. No, that was the wrong way around. There's the end screen. <laughs> Moving on from that, on the left hand side is a link to the full Velocity Lake playlist. And on the right hand side was just a video chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation elves. Uh, there's also a link to subscribe and check our page if you'd like to. And in the description you'll find links to merchandise, Instagram, Discord, all the good stuff, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.